Each year in the United States, thousands of major crimes go unsolved. When the case has gone cold and police have nowhere to turn, they seek assistance from the public. This is a program dedicated to solving these cases. This is Crime Stoppers Case Files. Welcome to Crime Stoppers, South Florida Case Files. I'm Dick Maston, the director of Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers. The purpose of this program is to share unsolved cases with as many South Florida viewers as possible, empowering you to do something about the violence on our streets. Every case we feature is unsolved. Every case we feature has a cash reward available. In other words, every case we feature is an opportunity for you to help your community and at the same time earn Crime Stoppers cash without even giving your name. Now let's get started. On April the 29th, 2011, 61-year-old Isabel Torres walked into the Alta Gracia dollar store on Northwest 17th Avenue. He had no idea he was walking into an armed robbery and that it would cost him his life. Well, my father was an amazing man, an amazing father, an amazing husband. My uncle was a good, hardworking man, very, very family-oriented. He loved his grandson. His grandson was his life. He was a great person. Growing up, I had best childhood I could ask for. He was, although a very hardworking man and worked almost every day of his life, but he made it a point to you know, spend time with us. He worked in the restaurant industry all his life. He did from being a chef to everything in between. He worked very hard. Came to this country looking for that American dream. I can honestly say he, he lived, he lived the American dream. I went apartment hunting and there's a condo next to a park that he used to take me to. And we were on, uh, I think, 26th floor. And when I came to realize, I was looking down at the park. And I told my cousin, I was like, wow, to think, you know, this is the park my dad used to bring me to. All right, please, can I help you? Hello? Yeah, what's the address? Hey, I don't know the address. I'm right here on 17 and 20. The, they, 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 they did a robbery. And I don't know, the, the person I think he died, I don't know, in the flow. Okay, what, somebody? It's 17 and 22, and, and, and they're on the dollar store. It's a dollar store? Yeah, in the corner. You gotta hurry up, bring an ambulance because he died. All right, then we get the police officer on this side. On April 29, 2011, at approximately 12 noon, at the Alta Gracia dollar store located at 2148 Northwest 17th Avenue, and Mr. Isabel Torres entered the dollar store. Shortly thereafter, a, a robbery took place. Yo soy la dueña de la tienda, el nombre es Altagracia Doral Discount. Trabajaba sola todo el día y ese día en específico eh, estuve trabajando sola toda la mañana. Hasta las 11 y algo llegó una señora a comprar y lo estaba atendiendo a ella. Y cuando entró el muchacho, un muchacho alto, delgado, es de tez morena y a saltar la tienda. The second our victim entered, our subject followed immediately. Uh, he was actually our first victim. The subject snatched his chain, pulled out a gun, and pointed to every single person inside the store, I want your money, your money, your money. He was in the process of robbing a second person when our victim fought back. From what witnesses tell me, our victim, upon seeing the gun, went directly for it. He's fairly short and our subject is fairly tall, so he couldn't grab a hold of a gun. He actually grabbed our suspect's wrist and tried to bring the gun down towards him so he can take it away from the subject. They fought briefly over the gun. The subject pushed him off. He attacked our subject again. During our victim's second attack on the subject, he did receive one gunshot wound, which was mortal. He siguió hasta donde yo estaba, y ahí se llevó un dinerito que había ahí arriba de, de, los, de las tarjetas, eh, un teléfono celular mío, un iPhone, y no sé qué más se habrá llevado, porque no me di cuenta. At that point, the subject continued his rampage on the store. By this time, one of the victims had already fled the store. I'm sure he was in fear that that person may call the police. So in reality, he didn't take much of anything else. When he fled the store, he fled in a northeast 
direction, cutting across the entire parking lot, being seen by several other witnesses. During our investigation, he was seen fleeing down 21st Terrace. We did canvas the area. We found several pieces of closed caption television or surveillance footage, which revealed the vehicle, the, the getaway vehicle per se, as a laser blue metallic 2006 or 2007 Impala, having a spoiler in the back, stock rims, very, very dark tinted windows, not very common. We have come to the conclusion that our suspect is about 25 to 30 years old, approximately 5'8 to 5'10, 160, 170 pounds, medium black skin. He was wearing a long sleeve white shirt, which he wore over his face, concealing from his nose down. Mr. Torres had the courage to stand up to the subject. Unfortunately for Mr. Torres, it cost him his life. It's just very hard because this is not the way it was supposed to be. I was supposed to be back and have both of my parents together. And now I only have my mother. There's a big hole left in the family. It's not the same. Everybody just has like an emptiness inside. It could happen to anyone. And you could be the person in these shoes and be going through the pain and the heartache of losing a loved one. Anybody out there, please come forward. Give us closure, give us that closure that my family needs. What we're asking is for the public to assist us in giving us information leading to the rest of the subject. Anyone with information is urged to call me, Detective T.C. Sapero at Miami Police Department Homicide Unit, or you can call Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. Isabel Torres was a good man. That was apparent in the way he lived and the way he died, trying to protect the women who were held at gunpoint in this store. Police believe the suspect is 25 to 30 years old, five foot nine inches tall, 165 pounds with a medium complexion. He was wearing a long sleeved white shirt and dark jeans. He was last seen leaving in a bright blue 2006 or 2007 Chevy Impala. If you have any information that could help Miami homicide detectives solve this case, call Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. Crime Stoppers is an international organization dedicated to bringing resolution to unsolved crimes. Members of the public work with police to make the world a safer place. Since 1975, thousands of Crime Stoppers organizations worldwide have helped make over one million arrests. Crime Stoppers acts as your advocate, keeping you anonymous and ensuring that your information gets to the right law enforcement agency. To leave a tip, log on to www.crimestoppers1.com. On June 17, 2010, Keith Washington left his Miami Gardens apartment to wait for a friend to pick him up. Minutes later, he was dead. Here's the story. Keith was my oldest. There wasn't nothing that I wouldn't do for my kids. You know, you got Keith was the oldest, Ron Mace oldest, and then you got Donald. He was the youngest. I think it's two years separated each one of them. I mean, his brothers got along, and his sister got along real good until they depart when they was young. But when they came back together, it wasn't nothing you couldn't do because that's just how much love they had for one another. Keep went to the school that I worked at. That was John F. Kennedy Middle School in North Miami. He did a whole lot of sports and stuff at that school. Yeah, I think he liked to run track. They used to call him a road runner, a Carrot City Fiat. Kitty is a good child. He did anything for you when you asked him to do. Keith was a pretty good kid. You know what I mean? He was quiet, kept to himself. Wasn't very talkative. He let you know what was really on his mind. He was nice, he didn't mess with nobody. 
All he did was on a computer. He stayed on a computer. He stayed texting on his phone or sitting on the steps in front of the apartment complex or standing in front of the gate, quiet to himself. He ain't messed with nobody. He got two kids. He never saw the last one because he had them pass away before he, he got a chance to see her. On June 17, 2010, officers from the Miami Gardens Police Department responded to 611 Northwest 177th Street in reference to a male down in the middle of the street. Our victim, Keith Washington, lived in the building adjacent to 611 Northwest 177th Street. He had lived there with his mother. He had just recently moved back from the South Carolina area back into Miami Gardens. The apartment complex that Mr. Washington lived in had a series of buildings surrounded by a fence. There's multiple residences in the area. The street is a heavily traveled street in Miami Gardens. We believe Mr. Washington was on the phone in an attempt to get a ride to some other location away from the apartment building that he was living in. He was approached at some point and an altercation may have ensued from that point. Sometime during the altercation, we believe a gun was produced by the other person and shots were fired and Mr. Washington uh, was struck by the bullets. Shortly after shots were fired, a passerby was driving down that busy street and had to stop to avoid Mr. Washington. That person stayed at the scene and summoned police. Mr. Washington was declared dead at the scene. Keep walking out there, I was 3, 30, 4 o'clock that morning. I took me a shower. I lay down. He told me he'll see me later. That morning, my niece came and said, you know somebody got killed out there? I said, no. I said, oh, Lord. I said, I hope it ain't nothing to keep. Me and her went out there, and I asked the detectives. I said, can you tell me who got killed? He said, why you think it's Keith? I said, because I felt him <laughs> when he passed away. They asked us to describe him. Me and my niece described him. And they told me, yeah, it was Keith. But the day before, it's like something came over me. And like, I guess he was saying, he was passing through, saying his goodbyes or something like that. I don't know. But I know something came to me, and it was like a choking feeling. And the next following day, he was gone. Welcome back to Crime Stoppers South Florida Case Files. We now return to the story of the murder of Keith Washington. On June 17, 2010, Keith Washington was found shot in the street in front of 611 Northwest 177th Street in Miami Gardens, Florida. We believe Mr. Washington was on the phone in an attempt to get a ride to some other location away from the apartment building that he was living in. He was approached at some point and an altercation may have ensued from that point. During the altercation, we believe that a gun was pulled out and then multiple shots were fired, one of them striking Mr. Washington. We know that there was a short period of time between when the shots were fired and when Mr. Washington was located due to the fact that we had a witness come from an apartment building adjacent to where we found Mr. Washington. This witness advised us that her building had been struck by a bullet and this occurred shortly before police arrived on scene. We know that Mr. Washington was involved in an altercation with another person. At this point, we don't have any information or suspect description in regard to the person that shot Mr. Washington. It's not the same. It ain't the same. Like, my birthday just passed. I ain't get a text on my birthday. Happy birthday, little sister. I love you. Nothing. Hard, real hard. Yesterday was 11 months he been gone. So it mean a lot to me, because I miss my brother. It's not the same. Whoever did this just need to come forward. And I know somebody seen something, knows something, they just need to come forward and say something. What if it was you? What if it was your family? How would you feel? You see, because everybody 
sooner or later might experience an incident like this. We believe there were witnesses to this event. However, as of this time, they have not come forward. We would like anybody with any information in regard to the homicide of Keith Washington to please call myself, Detective Joseph Marinella, at 305-474-6473, extension 1708, or if you'd like to remain anonymous, call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers. Miami Gardens detectives need your help solving this crime. If you have any information that may help, call Crime Stoppers today at 305-471-TIPS. You'll remain anonymous and be eligible for a cash reward. Welcome back to Crime Stoppers, South Florida Case Files. I'm Dick Maston. It's been proven that programs such as ours solve crimes after several airings of a case. With that in mind, we'd like to quickly review a few cases that we've featured on past episodes. On December the 17th of 2006, 17-year-old Rachel Lewis stopped by a home in North Miami Beach to speak with her boyfriend. A few short minutes later, Rachel was shot and her promising young life came to an end. On December 17, 2006, Rachel Lewis was shot in the 1700 block of Northeast 182nd Street in North Miami Beach at approximately 2 a.m. in the morning. Rachel Lewis, our victim, had received a phone call from her boyfriend asking her to come over. When she arrived, her boyfriend and his friends had just arrived home after being out that evening. When she got there, they all kind of hung out for a few minutes, Rachel never even getting a chance to exit her vehicle. When they were there talking, they saw a dark model uh, Chevy Impala drive by at a slow rate of speed on their street eastbound. This alarmed them because they had been having recent problems in the area with a lot of drive-by shootings. So when they saw that type of vehicle not knowing who was inside, they became alarmed and they went inside their house. However, Rachel and her boyfriend stayed outside talking because Rachel was going to be leaving in a few minutes. Uh, Rachel was sitting in her car and her boyfriend was standing outside the car. They were just chatting and at which time they saw the same vehicle driving down their street. They immediately noticed as it got closer that the, the windows on the driver and the passenger side began to lower. As they were looking at the vehicle, they then observed an assault rifle sticking outside on the driver's side of the vehicle and began firing multiple rounds. The passenger actually had to stick his hand out of the passenger side window, go over and up on top of the roof and started firing that way. When the shooting began, uh, the boyfriend took off, as any normal person would. He ran towards the house, and there was another parked vehicle there. He got down, and he ran in front of the vehicle, and then ran to the back of the house. And Rachel uh, attempted to get out of her vehicle, but on the passenger side. And that's where she was struck by a bullet. Once the shooting stopped, they took off at a high rate of speed eastbound. Officers arrived on the scene, rescue was requested immediately, and she expired on the scene. And our investigation revealed that it appears that Rachel Lewis was not the intended target that night. There was a young man that is a known gang member that used to go to that house at times, and it's believed that he was the intended target. Unfortunately, at this time, the case has gone unsolved, and if anyone has any information regarding Rachel Lewis, please call the North Miami Beach Police Department at 305-948-2940, and you can ask for Detective Denham. And if you'd like to remain anonymous, you can call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers. Rachel wasn't the target of these killers. She was an innocent bystander, killed because certain members of our society aim to kill, and they don't care who else dies in the process. Police are looking for the two men who were traveling in a newer model brown four-door Chevy Impala with tinted windows. If you have any information that could help detectives, call Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. Crime Stoppers of Miami-Dade has one goal, to make the streets safer for law-abiding citizens by solving cases and capturing criminals. To learn more about your local Crime Stoppers, become a fan on Facebook or log on to CrimestoppersMiami.com. Now I'm Dick Maston. Be sure to join us next week for another episode of Crime Stoppers Case Files.